Welcome back to Steel City Drones. I am Dave King. Today, it's a beautiful Sunday in winter time in Pittsburgh. So we're gonna go ahead today, get out of the open and do a nice video for anybody who wants to know about anything regarding drones and survey work. This is the absolute guide that you're gonna wanna follow. We've had a couple successful videos with our RTK video and also what is survey grade work and what are the deliverables for survey grade. So we get a lot of questions here and we got a lot of people wanting to buy either the Mavic 3 multi-spectral or the Enterprise E version as well as the Matrice 350 with the P1 camera and there's still a lot of people that don't understand what they need and what's the best way, what's the best tools to use to be able to go ahead and do survey grade work. So to start off with, let's go ahead and break down what we're going to cover in this video. This is going to be a very comprehensive guide from start to finish for beginners to anybody who knows things about mapping that want to know more about mapping. We're going to talk about equipment and you can see here we have a lot of different equipment that we're going to cover we're going to talk about all the different workflow processes we're also going to introduce the survey methods and what those survey workflows are because there's two different types of mapping missions that we can do simply we can use something like this just to be able to create 2d and 3d maps but if we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get it down to survey grade, then there's a lot of considerations we have to discuss and break down, and there's a lot of things that you have to consider and really get to know very well before you go ahead and dive deep into the survey abyss. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about the equipment. So if you wanna get started using drones for mapping, you can use just about any new drone on the market. And many of the older models even are compatible with flight planning software that you're gonna to need to be able to do your flight plans. Now, the flight plans are gonna allow us to be able to do what's called photogrammetry, where the aircraft is flying in rows with a certain overlap and the camera is pointing straight down in a nadir position taking pictures. When we take a picture, the actual drone itself will stamp metadata on that picture of its geolocation. Now, that geolocation is going to be inaccurate with respect to Earth. It's the same consumer type of GPS system that you will see inside your cell phone that has a range between 20 to 35 feet of inaccuracy of where it is on Earth. Now, if we're just making simple 2D orthomosaic maps, it doesn't really matter about the accuracy. And then we're gonna to wanna to be able to bring that into third-party applications that can create a 2D orthomosaic. It's like a detailed map and or a 3D model as well. So a lot of people don't understand that your basic average drone can do those and do them fairly well. Now, it's a matter of a lot of things as far as the resolution of that map and or do we need to go beyond just the basics of what we're talking about? Do we need to be able to go ahead and get into survey grade work where we need to be able to get very detailed data inside that map where a very specific point has a geo reference that is very, very accurate down to inaccuracies of a tenth of a foot or less. That is what's considered survey grade work. Now, if that is the case, that means then that really changes how we have to approach what we actually purchase and use and how we go about using that to be able to get the desired results. So if we need to do survey grade mapping with high level of accuracy, we cannot use a camera like this. This is the H20T camera for the Matrice 300 and 350. This has multiple cameras built into it, a wide camera, a zoom camera, and a thermal camera. 
The reason why we cannot use something like this, we have lots of videos on this subject, just very, very simple, is that it's very difficult to create a camera model in post-production that's going to be able to get us and tie that down to very high accuracy. We would need a camera sensor like this. This is the P1 camera. This is a dedicated mapping sensor, mechanical shutter, full frame, 48 megapixel camera. This is a very, very good camera sensor that I would use and recommend if you have a 300 and 350 platform. This is gonna be very, very ideal. You can also though, you don't have to go as expensive and as elaborate as what I'm showing you there. You can go with something with like a Mavic 3 Enterprise that will allow you to also have a very good mapping camera sensor built into it that will also give you very good desirable results. So beyond the drone, we also have to be able to consider using RTK. What is RTK? Well, again, we have a very, very good video on everything about RTK. You're gonna wanna check that out, but a very, very quick synopsis is that RTK is a commercial grade GPS system that allows us to be able to use a base station, whether it's something physical on location or remotely that we can go ahead and use what's called end trip service to be able to broadcast that information to the drone. Either way, that's going to allow us to be able to get very high accurate data that will then put that on the metadata of the pictures for what we need to do it and process with. And also the ability to be able to use terrain following with RTK. So drones like the Mavic 3 Enterprise, the Matrice 350 and 300, those are all going to have terrain following features that will allow us to be able to fly at the same altitude above ground level and will allow us to be able to maintain a very consistent what's called GSD, ground sampling distance, but it's essentially really how much resolution we're actually getting on our picture. Can you use something other than this to be able to achieve very good mapping results? Absolutely, but you will have to be able to add a lot more to your workflow to be able to achieve it. A lot more what's called ground control points, check shots, all that stuff has to be used. We're gonna get into that now. We're gonna go back outside and do a more of a deep dive into the workflow. You could have the best equipment. You could have the best flight plans. You could have the actual best data collected. If we don't validate the data, we're not gonna know how good our data is because in post-processing, we're gonna bring our data into a really good third-party application editor like Pix4D, and then we have to also be able to go ahead and use established points and enter them as well so that we compare our data to the actual established points. So to be able to get really good absolute accuracy for our projects down to a tenth of a foot or better, we have to either A, use an end trip connection, or we have to be able to use a base station. This is the DRTK2 base station that DGI sells. This is an MLID Reach RS2 Plus, which we really, really like. So what we have to do is we have to reference and tell these base stations exactly where they are on relative Earth. So as you'll see right here, right in the middle of this circle, this base station is set up exactly over this point. This tripod actually has a laser rangefinder where all I have to do is touch the button and there's a laser right in the middle of that which allows us to be able to go ahead and set up a point and put it directly over a point very, very accurately. And then what I can do is I can record and do the observing of this data 
for up to two hours and just let it record that data. Now, the data at that point is still not good. It has to be corrected. So what we do is we go ahead and upload this to another third party processor. A very popular industry standard is using something what's called Opus. Opus is a website that we can go ahead and upload our raw Rhinex data and then get a corrected point for X, Y, and Z. And then we can go ahead and say, okay, base station, this is your point. Then when we connect the drone to it, it will then tag the metadata of every picture and get corrected data. Now this is a portable ground control point made by Propeller. This is what's called arrow point. This arrow point is solar powered. We can also go ahead and charge it as well. We turn it on. We lay it down on the ground, and then we allow it to record and observe data for about two hours to be able to get corrected data. Then we can say that data, that GPS location is exactly right in the center. That's what we can do with this. Now, these are approximately $1,000. So if you have small projects, you know, we're gonna need at least th minimum of three ground control points for any project, and PIX4D recommends a minimum of five. Other larger projects can be up to eight to 10 ground control points, and that could be an additional eight to $10,000. So in my opinion, Propeller arrow points are not a realistic, most effective way to be able to get real-time GPS data. This here is a Hoodman, sort of like a Hoodman landing pad, but they are marked, you could, and they, you can go all the way up to one through 10, and then you can lay them down anywhere and then collect them. And then again, be able to go ahead and record on the camera these positions and these targets. Now, what I'd like again, going back to the reach receivers, now this, again, this what I would consider to be is my rover. And the way I would then go ahead and shoot this point is I would put my dowel right in the center of my point. We're gonna go ahead and level this out exactly where it is. Once it's level, I can then go ahead and make an observation with it and record that point. So again, the workflow is that this rover is connected to my base station that's over there and it's getting corrected data real time with this antenna, this radio antenna right here. And that's how we can go ahead and record and observe real good data for this ground control point. We also have to establish checkpoints that we can use independently to verify the accuracy of the data that we collected with the drone. These points are not used to geo-reference the project. That's strictly done with the control points. The checkpoints simply compare what we have collected. We can go ahead and establish anything that's a good reference in our target. So we could use parking stripes, corners, we can use sewer drains, anything like that, we can use something that's already established. Then when we're over our point, we can go ahead and use our cell phone, use the app that comes with this station, then go ahead and record the observation. Then we can bring all of the observations and export it and put them into a CSV file and have them all ready to use. So that's how we would use two different base stations, one as a rover and one actually as a base station. So you may be saying, well, what if I want to use the DRTK2 base station that DGI sells? Do I need the other two base stations? You're not going to be able to use this with a third party base station and this base station will not record and observe the Rhinex data that you would need to be able to get corrected data. But you can convert RTCM3 to Rhinex 
but the issue is to be able to use it in a base rover configuration, which you can't do, plus all of the extra processing time to be able to convert the files. So again, it all breaks down into cost. You can get this for approximately $3,800, but then you still have no way of getting really good absolute data. You'd have to find other ways to be able to do that. Or you would have to go and get a lot of arrow points. You might need up to 10 for larger projects. That's a lot of money. Or you could just go ahead and use a combination of a base and a rover like these MLED base stations and then be able to have them for every project and they're reusable and you can put them and use them over and over again to establish very good geodata for every new project that you do. If you're wanting to start using this equipment yourself and start using this to its fullest of potential, I really like the choice of using these MLID Reach GNSS receivers. You cannot beat them for the money. Again, a pair of them is going to be approximately $6,000 with tripods and everything. And it really is going to allow you to control your own data. That will allow you to be able to set and record your own data and get all that accurate data that you're going to need for survey grade accuracy. Again, these are very, very difficult to beat. And when we compare these to Trimble GNSS receivers, the R10, they come very, very close. We did back-to-back -back testing and we were able to be within five hundredths of accuracy. So that is very, very amazing at this price. And why that is a game changer, because prior to these MID receivers, we would have to be able to use the Trimble devices. And the Trimble GNSS receivers are about $20,000 to $25,000 to $30,000, which really kind of almost put that at a very, at a price point that was not very realistic. And now we can do this and have everything that we need for a much more affordable price point. So I know we went over a lot of technical data, but that is the workflow on how to be able to get really good, accurate data so that we can then go ahead and say that it is survey grade accurate. There's no other way to do it. We can't just buy the drone with an RTK module or the DRTK2 base station and then collect that data, hand it to, off to a client and say, okay, this is good. We have to be able to do a certain workflow process and really be able to validate that data. So if you want to know more about all of this and the entire workflow, we are almost done with our survey grade online course where we actually go over all these aspects, all, all the equipment, the entire workflow, everything you need, soup the nuts, in an online course. As well, we're also going to have a PIX4D course. We are licensed PIX4D trainers that we are going to do an online course and later this summer we'll be offering PIX4D classes as well in person and online. The same way with the survey grade work. If you are interested, you can come to us and we can do one-on-one -on -one or small group survey grade training courses with you as well. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please feel free, give us a call. We'll be glad to talk to you more about any of this. And if you like this video, please help us grow the channel, like the video, hit the subscribe button, and a notification bell, and that way you'll get more content more frequently as soon as it comes out. So thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon.